Good Saturday evening, everybody, live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. Hang on one second here. I knew I forgot to do something here. Audio may be a little low for a second. Much better. There we go. Okay, sorry about that. Knew I was forgetting something on there. You tend to forget things when you're running these shows yourself. That's kind of the problem a little bit for this. Again, to make certain that we are keeping an eye on what's going on with weather and making certain that everything is exactly where it needs to be. So if you have any plans for outdoors tonight, that looks pretty good. No problem at all across the Mid-South. And again, through the rest of the evening tonight, no major problems being seen. Tomorrow, same thing, pretty much getting again the possibility of some more showers and thunderstorms out there, but not a a great deal of them so definitely good news on that and again throughout the rest of the afternoon uh, into the evening for tomorrow also some pretty quiet conditions uh, as well let me welcome everybody again who is just tuning in we are live and direct on periscope and twitter and if you've got any questions concerns anything like that we're also live on facebook as well so doing the triple threat tonight no idea how well this is working out, but hey, why look a gift horse in the mouth? So if you have any questions, again, please let me know what you're uh, thinking about on Periscope, Twitter, and if you're on Facebook, again, drop your comments into the section below and let us know more about what your weather situation is at your location. Temperature, wind speed, cloud cover, whatever you got, let us know a little bit more about what's going on into and around the Mid-South. Currently, again, some pretty quiet conditions out there. St. Francis showing a very quiet Germantown Parkway. Don't often see that at this time of the evening but we are getting at least a little bit of some nicer views into and around portions of the Mid-South. Got some great sunset shots tonight. Hopefully you've been able to pass some of those along uh, into the area. Germantown Parkway, notice again a little bit more in the way of haze out there. So we are pe picking up a little bit more in the way of visibility problems starting off for tonight, but we'll be seeing more of that coming up as we go into the rest of Sunday morning. We'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little while. Currently on radar, we don't again have a lot of much going on. Again, currently seeing clean sweeps across the Mid-South. A few sprinkles from earlier today. Beyond that, just not really looking at too much of anything out across much of the area. Chances of rain, again, we're going to be seeing them over the next couple of days, but beyond that, again, we're going to be seeing the possibility of some more problems out across the Mid-South where it comes to rainfall out there, so we'll be bringing you more information on that. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and jump into the forecast here real quick. We are monitoring, again, a couple of things going on. First of all is Jose. That is, again, going to be a problem. That There was a report from a magazine in Philadelphia that said that Jose was going to be slamming right into the East Coast around. New Jersey and Philadelphia into that area. Not true. They put an old graphic of Hurricane Sandy's path, and that is not going to be the case. This is going to be the correct graphic from the National Hurricane Center showing what's left of Jose as a Category 1 storm moving up and curving away from the United States. So this one is, again, the true map, the one that you saw in the Philly magazine that I posted earlier. You can scroll down on Facebook to find more information about that down that direction and find out more details as to what's going on. Either way, Jose, as it gets closer to the United States, is going to be a threat to New England and that up around Massachusetts. It could go very close to around the Cape Cod area, Rhode Island, just off of Long Island Sound, and that could be, again, a bit of a problem for anybody traveling up there. There's also the probability that, as of right now, the water from Jose is being pulled away from the shore uh, as it gets pulled toward that area of low pressure, less pressure on top of the ocean waves kind of stacks it up, and that's where the storm surge comes in. That's being pulled away from the shore for right now. But here's the thing. As that pulls the water closer to the storm center, this has a tendency to draw water away from the coastline. So if you're planning on heading into the ocean, if you're taking a quick vacation between, say, Miami and Chesapeake Bay, I would be very careful to watch out for riptides because those can pull you very far out into the ocean like about a half a mile or a mile and you can get exhausted swimming against those things so if you see the warnings out on the beach not a good idea to go into the water definitely a good idea to stay on the shore we'll continue to monitor jose as it makes its progress back to the north now two other problems to talk about 
just issued for today, Tropical Storms Lee and Maria. Two of them out into the Atlantic. Lee is a little bit farther out. It is way out into the Atlantic Ocean and will continue that direction into the next several days. Uh, possibly as a tropical storm for about the next 48 hours more or less and then kind of withering into a tropical depression so not really seeing much of a problem with that. The problem we've got is with the M storm Maria. This one looks to be very conducive for development will be a hurricane by about mid-afternoon tomorrow and then making its way and this is the worst part about all this it's going to be seeing again the possibility of this moving right over the area that Irma moved through more or less within the course of the next few days so more bad news for parts of the Atlantic and the Caribbean and again, could be a major that's a Category 3 hurricane and beyond as it gets closer to around Hispaniola and into and around the area of the Bahamas. So this bears watching, especially for Florida, especially for the Bahamas, especially for the East Coast. All those locations are going to have to deal with tropical weather. Again, we just passed the peak of the season, and this is something that we really, really need to watch. So please keep that in mind. And we'll bring you an update tonight on News Channel 3 at 10 and on News Channel 3 Daybreak into tomorrow as well. Could be the possibility of some fog into tomorrow morning. The area shaded in yellow is where we could see some visibilities of around say two miles or less into around much of the Mid-South area for tomorrow morning. So please keep that in mind. Otherwise, according to the National Weather Service, we don't have much of anything going on uh, into and around the area where it comes to major amounts of weather out there. Uh, Marine Meeks on Facebook, recent beautiful sunset color has been caused by smoke from the wildfires. We've been getting a little bit of the smoke out that direction. We haven't been getting a whole bunch of it, but some of that has been making its way uh, down into our area by just a little bit, and some of that has been doing a pretty good job of coloring sunsets back to the north of us when it hasn't been obscuring the entire sky out there. Now, most of the smoke plumes have done a pretty good job of being quashed by some rain and some snow off the uh, west coast from some storms that are moving on through, but we still have plenty of plumes out there of fires, and a lot of these fires that you see out west are still uncontained, thousands of acres that are still uh, burning out that direction. So this, again, could be a bit of a problem uh, into the next couple of days as we watch this area of smoke make its way into portions of the Mid-South, and that could cause some problems back to the north with, again, visibility and also air quality. So something to think about there. Here in the Mid-South area, again, we've got an approaching cold front, half-hearted attempt at a cold front. It's going to be making its way into the area, bouncing back to the north as high pressure pushes that air way back on up to the north of us. And unfortunately, that's going to keep us solidly right in the tropical air, which means no relief from the heat and the humidity. Everything is going to be very much on the rather warm and muggy side out there. Billy Franklin, welcome from Lexington tonight. Uh, Betty Smith, thanks for dropping on by for this evening as well. Clara Delk Martin from Atoka, thanks for joining us. Uh, Angela Riddell, thanks for joining us as well. And thanks to everybody else who's tuning in on Facebook, Periscope, and Instagram for tonight. The chances of rain will be better as we get into next week as that front tries to get a little closer to us, but high pressure is just going to be too much on the strong side for the next couple of days. Low temperature into tonight, again, going to be back into around the mid to upper 60s, lower 70s for the metro area. High temperatures tomorrow pushing 90 degrees across a good portion of the Mid-South. Stray chance of a shower or thunderstorm just about any place across the area as we get into the afternoon of Sunday. That'll be dwindling with sunset once again and low temperatures Sunday night, about the same back into the mid to upper 60s. High temperatures on Monday, right about 90 degrees or so. So not seeing again a lot of major change taking place in that location. Seven day forecast that's available from me at our website at wreg.com slash weather if you'd like to see more about what's going on into the forecast period. I forgot to mention again, if you're just tuning in, never been here before, forecast right here available in the blue bar social media available in the uh, red bar here up there and again and the other side over there if you can't get the forecast on air or online and are out and about in the mid-south join me on country 92.5 and oldies 102.3 be glad to have you along for listening in on the forecast on the east arkansas broadcast network i'll be back and on the air with bob and josh on talkback live bright and early monday morning for more weather going on at that point I Again, through the rest of the evening, no major changes being seen. 
and pretty quiet into the rest of the weekend outside of those few chances of showers and thunderstorms, none of which are showing up for tonight, so good news on that. I'll have a complete update on the tropics coming up on News Channel 3 at 10, also on News Channel 3 Daybreak tomorrow. If there's something on here you would like to see when it comes to weather, please let me know, austin.onic at wreg.com. Please send me an email and let me know what you would like to see. More climate information, uh, weather around the world, satellite pictures, more information about, again, that going on. Whatever it is you'd like, we'd love to be able to feature it, but we can't do that unless you send it. You know, got a minor problem with the psychic power, so it doesn't really work too well on that. Join me on News Channel 3 at 10. Shea Arthur will have more on the day's news. Mike Sadie will have a very busy day in sports. And, of course, I'll be back on live tomorrow morning with Nina Harrelson on News Channel 3 Daybreak. Thanks for joining me for a quick weather update of our video weather blog, Weather Overtime, tonight on News Channel 3. And stay tuned to News Channel 3 throughout the rest of the weekend for more news, weather, and sports.